Recently, with several different trainings with teachers, there was some discussion about the Common Core Standards. They recognized that the Teaching English Learners website and the materials found within that would reach or exceed the Sadai, Sheltered English, or SIOP protocols that they were familiar with. But the question came up as to whether or not these materials would uh, connect or correlate to the Common Core Standards. And the answer that I gave them was absolutely. That the materials were designed to exceed and, and maximize the expectations of my students. The design for scaffolded reading, for building vocabulary, for activities preceding anything to do with lecture or any other kind of tools was an important commodity that allowed teachers and students to reach the standards. But at the same time, it also occurred to me that we spent a great deal of time on developing what to do as opposed to how to do it. And so what the bulk of this particular video encompasses was simply as to how to assemble things so that you can best reach the Common Core Standards with the materials on the Teaching English Learners website, or for that matter, any of the other tools that you plan to use with your students. To design lessons that surround the Common Core Standards, we need to understand them and what their expectations are. Clearly, the expectations of the Common Core Standards is to improve literacy skills, to be able to make sense of text material, to be able to understand the concepts and the vocabulary that surrounds them, to be able to formulate opinions, reach conclusions, and importantly, to be able to write about them sensibly. The materials that you find on the Teaching English Learner website will definitely reach the Common Core Standards. However, teachers often get enamored with the activities and will take them out of context. Example, vocabulary building in the Nines Core activity. A wonderful strategy, but needs to be done in the appropriate position. What we need to do now is to look at how to use the materials to design effective lessons that reach the Sadai protocols, Sheltered English or PSYOP, as well as reaching and attaining the Common Core Standards. To illustrate the point, I thought it would be a wise idea to walk through the design of a lesson. And the lesson I chose for this video is working on the scientific method. There are some very important concepts to be developed, complex vocabulary. I expect my students to be able to manipulate that vocabulary with important readings and writings to specific kinds of details. And my students should also be able to demonstrate mastery of complex reading materials, be able to write to different points of view, to be able to do conclusions or lab designs, perhaps some research. And of course, they should be able to demonstrate mastery through various forms of assessment, including standardized tests and authentic assessment. We begin the lesson with an engaging activity that's loaded with critical thinking and problem solving. The students set up the apparatus as you see here. They balance the nickel on its edge, put the toothpick on top of the nickel and then cover that with the cup. Their job is simply to knock over the toothpick without knocking over the nickel and you can't touch the cup. I wonder what that combs for. In this lesson, students are involved in a teacher-led demonstration. They're trying to decide whether or not the liquids in front of them are the same or different. There are three specific tests that the students will observe. Before each test, students look at the test and predict what they think might be the outcome. They get to discuss this with their partners and then write down their predictions. We then complete the test and the students reach a conclusion based upon their observations. This is done for each of the tests. What I'm trying to do with this particular activity is build context for the scientific method. Mm -hmm. Why are they? What are they? That's a pretty good question. Go on, but I'm not going to tell you yet. What other questions might you ask? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? That's, good. That's not a bad one. Same one? Okay. What's in there? What's in there? Those are all reasonably good questions. I like it. What's in there? In fact, that's maybe where I'd start. Yes? 
How are we going to use it? Well, I'm going to use it, and you're going to watch and see if you can answer some questions for me. Could these liquids be the same liquids? Yeah. No? You don't think so? Yeah. Could they be the same? Yeah. Okay, they might be. Do you think they're the same? Yeah. Well, do you think I put all the same stuff in, the, in these containers? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. How could I find out? Mm. Oh, but now I have these in glasses, and that's a really good one to drink it. But what if that isn't water? Ah, wait a minute. Yeah, well, if it's a poison, that's exactly right. So I don't think I want to drink. What happened? Oh, float. They're floating on top. Wow. Cool. All right, a couple more. Yeah, I'll do the same. They're floating on top. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right? The ice cubes sank to the bottom. Anybody seen that before? Ice cubes on the bottom? Okay. During the demonstration and the debriefing, students will be exposed to the content vocabulary. They are expected to write them down in their student glossaries and come up with, in their own words, what they believe is the definition. Once those are in place, then I'm going to look for tools to help me and my students practice their vocabulary. One of my favorites is the nine square. Nine square is a puzzle game. The teacher cuts up the nine pieces of paper. Then students have to reassemble the keywords and definitions correctly. You've helped design the context. The students have been working hard on their vocabulary. Now it's time to advance their literacy skills. So I look for reading materials. And a great strategy to improve reading comprehension and reading speed is something called cued retelling. Cued retelling is a scaffolded reading strategy. Teachers may have one or two versions of the same reading material. Students read individually, then working with a partner, take turns becoming the reporter and the recorder. And finally, how do you assess your students? Can they do authentic assessment? Can they research? Can they solve problems? Can they read the directions on their own? Can students look at the results and reach reasonable conclusions based upon the scientific method? Can they compare their results with others and write about it? Can they research things from the internet using the scientific method and reach reasonable conclusions and write down the results? By carefully planning and designing your lessons, You've helped your students work very hard on their college and career readiness anchor standards in listening, speaking, reading, and writing. You've promoted critical thinking and problem-solving skills, all done with the materials on the Teaching English Learners website. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and good luck building your lessons for your English language learners.